from Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Jody Cohen. Jody Sternoff Cohen is a best selling author, award winning journalist, functional practitioner, and founder of Vibrant Blue Oils, where she's combined her training in nutritional therapy and aromatherapy to create unique proprietary blends of organic and wild crafted essential oils. She's helped over 70,000 clients heal from brain related challenges, including anxiety, insomnia, and autoimmunity. Her website, VibrantBlueOils.com, is visited by over 500,000 natural health seekers every year, and she has rapidly become a top resource for essential oils education on the internet today. Her first book, Healing with Essential Oils, is available on Amazon, and her new book, Essential Oils to Boost the Brain and Heal the Body, will be released March 16, 2021. Stressed? If so, you are going to love this episode. I'm talking with my dear friend Jody Cohen, who will be sharing tips, tools, and strategies to calm the nervous system so you can feel better. She'll be dropping some powerful nuggets, so this is one of those episodes you'll want to listen to while taking notes. Ready? Here we go. Okay, everybody, you're just in for such a treat today. I have my dear friend Jody Cohen with us. Now, she had a very powerful episode that we did a long time ago, but I brought her back because if there is anyone who understands the power of of the parasympathetic place we need to be in to pivot when we're going from one emotional state to another and how to navigate all of that, it is Jody. So let's just dive right in. Welcome, my friend. Oh my God, I love seeing you, especially with like the beautiful flowers. You're so in your element. <laughs> It's always it's always a sunny day amongst the cherry blossoms. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So for those of you who are listening and not watching, I have this gigantic cherry blossom uh, thing on my wall, and I just love it. It just makes me feel good. So that's what Jody's referring to. So let let's just dive right in. Okay. Tell us what the whole parasympathetic like. Walk us through what what goes on within the body when we're stressed. Yeah. Let's just start there. Basically, you know, your body is designed to keep you alive, right, for survival. And we're talking about your autonomic nervous system, which controls your automatic functions, like your breathing, your heart rate, your ability to digest your food, your ability to detoxify, your immune system's ability to function, your ability to calm inflammation. And it has different gears. You know, just you might even think of gears on a bike, right? when there is danger you switch into the parasympathetic or the sympathetic gear where all of your blood is routed to your arms and your limbs so you can either fight or flee your breathing increases there are energy hormones like cortisol and adrenaline that course through your veins so that you have that energy to survive and you know that everyone has physical and mental emergencies. What's interesting is that it's not just when a tiger is chasing you. It could be when you're worried about anything, you know, your financial future, a relationship, your, your job, anything that might be going on, your mind then signals your body to release all of those stress hormones. And so what's supposed to happen is there's a short acute emergency, you know, you're driving, someone's going to change into your lane, they don't see you, you react quickly, you honk, you brake, you make sure there's no car accident, and then you switch back into the parasympathetic rest, digest, heal, recovery. This is where your blood is routed back towards your organs of digestion, where your heart rate slows down, where your respiratory rate slows down, where you feel safe where you're able to kind of take in all of your options. One of the interesting things mentally that happens when you're in that fight or flight, you know, survival state is that your pupils, the black parts of your eyes dilate, they get really big like saucers. And that is to let in more light so that you can kind of hyper focus on your next survival tactic. But what's interesting is it shuts down all of these options. Like if you're ever trying to connect with someone and you notice their pupils are really big, they are not going to be able to hear you. That is not when you want to discipline your child or have an in-depth conversation with your partner. You need to make sure that they're in that sympathetic or parasympathetic 
rest and digest state and that's when their pupils are a normal size or small. I do this actually all the time with my daughter. I look at her pupil size to kind of gauge how stressed is she. And when, when you're in that stress state, um, the on off switch between this sympathetic fight or flight and parasympathetic rest and digest is your vagus nerve. It's cranial nerve number 10. And you might literally think of it as a light switch. It helps you shift between these two states of your nervous system. But the important thing is that when, you know, when we're in a situation with betrayal or something going on, that is triggering that danger response in our body. And so it shifts us physiologically into that sympathetic fight or flight state where you feel like you have limited options, your back is against the wall. Um, for me, I experience it as, as very heightened anxiety. My heart sometimes feels like I might explode and I just almost feel overwhelmed and paralyzed. And that is not the best time to make decisions because you're not able to actually connect to your higher creative problem solving skills and see all the options that are available to you. And so instead of making a decision that you might regret, in that back up against the wall state, you need to kind of take this pause and very intentionally calm your system down. And suddenly, you know, what goes from like, oh my God, it's either A or B, I have no choices, I'm helpless, I'm a victim. It's like, wait a minute, I have a lot of choices and maybe I actually need more information before I can even make a choice. It's, it's life altering. And so it, this is really where you you feel like your your mind has been hijacked yes. and we have no control over it, but we do. So you're saying it's when we're in that state, take a pause because we're not going to be making decisions that when we're in a better frame of mind that we can. And this is also the place where we st we're not meant to stay there for a long time. Like this is this is let's say there's there's a car coming at us, we see it, we jump the curb to safety. Like it did its job. It it had us do get to that place we need to so that we're able to jump the curb to safety but after that we're supposed to calm down go back to normal but it would be i think with what you're saying it would be as if we're jumping to the curb 24 7 yes exactly and, and that's exhausting you could see so when we stay there are so many places i want to go with this but let's say we stay in that place what would be some of the signs that we see that the physical mental emotional signs that we see to know hey you know what you have ignited this stress response right here and and it it's just it's going you better do something about it what would we notice yeah the the most prominent thing is you might feel anxious you might feel like your heart is racing you might feel warm like you're perspiring you might feel like you're breathing in rapidly um, it, it might, you, you might feel like complete overwhelmed to the state of paralysis, like, oh my God, I, I you know, you might feel afraid. Um, physically, your, your mouth might be dry. Um, you, you might have, um, your digestion might be off, like you might, um, you know, have diarrhea or constipation, something that just shows you that you're not quite as regular as you'd like to be, um, you know, you might just, it, it's just kind of that, that feeling like um, you, you might not be able to sleep. You might kind of have those repetitive thoughts where you're going to a worst case scenario and you can't necessarily see something positive. It might be really hard if you try to tap into what am I grateful for? You can't even think of something positive. It's just kind of that paralyzing, overwhelming um, fear, anxiety state. So I'm in the minds of my listeners and viewers now who are saying, oh my gosh, I've been in that place for, you know, 10 years, right? And they're so used to it, they don't even know that there's another side. They're so used to that feeling of being uncomfortable, being anxious, not physically feeling well, not sleeping well. And I think they just attribute it to, well, this is just the way it is, or resign themselves to thinking, this is just the way it goes. This is where they are right now. So someone who is hearing this right now and they recognize that's them, what do they do? Yeah, there are a lot of things. First of all, no, just know in your heart that, that you can, you have lots of options and you have, you can be safe and you can feel better. And it's, it's almost interesting. It's like, you know, when you, if you lead with the body, then the mind and the, you know, physiology is all connected, like emotional, mental, physical. So Physically, things that you can do are just breathing practices. You can, you know, inhale.
for the count of four, hold it for the count of four, and then exhale for the count of eight. Like as long as the exhale, you know, when the doctors are um, taking your heart, at least the song just taught me this, when they're listening to your heartbeat and they're having you inhale and exhale, that's what they're listening for. It's called heart rate variability. Your heart's supposed to speed up when you inhale and slow down when you exhale. So the more you can make your exhale longer, the more you're helping your heart rate to slow down. That's amazing. And and everybody, uh, Jody's referencing Dr. Elisa Song, who is a, a holistic pediatrician and just uh, just amazing. So, okay. So just the breathing is, I mean, I always say we're breathing anyway, may as well just do it right and do it in a way that's going to help us. Yeah. So breathing is something that really can make a difference. Yes. And I mean, you know, uh, essential oils are my thing. So I just want to share, it doesn't need to be mine. I, I have an oil called parasympathetic that's clove and lime. I shared the full recipe and my upcoming book, um, Boost the Brain and Heal the Body with Essential Oils. But the application point is what's critical. It's behind the earlobe on the mastoid bone. And what's important about this is we talked about the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, uh, where it goes in the body, it starts at the back of the head, splits, winds around both sides behind the earlobe on that mastoid bone. This is actually where it's the most accessible to the surface and kind of the largest. So even if you don't have an oil, you know, massaging that point, massaging your earlobes, you know, singing and humming kind of stimulate this vagus nerve. And then it winds through um, your face, your mouth, smiling, laughing. I used to have a coworker who had to deal with a lot of um, challenging individuals. And she would always, I'd see her smiling when she was like talking to them. And she said, when she smiles while she talks to difficult people, it enables her to be more polite and kind. And I think it's because she was tapping into parasympathetic. Wow. And I love that because people mirror, you know, so if she's smiling, it's more likely that the person she's speaking with could, at first would at least question, you know, well, why is she smiling? And maybe they join in too. So now let's dive into oils because this, I know this is your wheelhouse. No one knows this better than you. I, I know we can diffuse oils. We can put them on different parts. What's the difference between if we diffuse them or physically put them on? Like walk us through what goes on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the most effective way to actually um, assimilate oils is just to smell them. Your sense of smell is your most powerful of your five senses. It's, it's really aligned with keeping you safe because you can smell food and water. You can also smell fire and predator odor. Uh, there was a researcher actually out of Seattle, a Nobel laureate named Linda Buck, who did all of this research on kind of the olfactory receptors in the nasal pathway. And she kind of isolated the uh, olfactory receptors that picked up predator odor. And then she took it one step further to see what would turn them off. And it turned out it was roses. So stopping to smell the roses, rose oh, essential wow. oil calms that fear response. And then the, the other thing that's really fun is um, you, know, you have two hemispheres of your brain, your right brain and your left brain, and they do different things. And um, on the Parasympathetic Summit, Dr. Robert Melilio, who's really good at balancing the hemispheres, said that almost every dysfunction from autism to ADD to, you know, anxiety is all overactivation of um, the left side. And so he uses oils to balance the right side. But what's interesting, what's kind of contrary to that, I, um, I know a lot about panic attacks because I personally experience them. That is the right frontal part, so your right forehead, that's a little overactive. And so when you're looking at the brain, what you're always trying to do is put it into balance. So if the right front is overactive, what you want to do is stimulate the left front because then it balances it. And the easiest way to stimulate the left front is to smell something through your left nostril, to literally use your thumb to plug your right nostril, smell. It could be any oil you have in your house. You know, oils um, for citrus fruits come from the peel. You can peel a tangerine and smell that. And so just smelling something through the left nostril turns on the, the right frontal lobe, the right forehead. I'm sorry, the left. Smell through the left. The left nostril goes directly to the left forehead. That then balances the right forehead. And I, I personally can attest to this. You can go from um, having an anxiety attack and feeling like your heart is going to explode out of your chest to feeling better immediately. 
Wow. Yeah. Now, I remember um, getting a, different types of meditations, and I forgot what it's called. You probably know where it, it there are noises on both sides, yeah. and it is to balance. What what am I what am I talking about here? What is yeah, there, I mean, there are a lot of there's like a brain harmony tool. There there's a mm. lot of things, and even the dry breathing in yoga, where you're plugging different nostrils. That's exactly what you're doing. You're sepa- separately stimulating, but kind of in balance so that you activate both sides of the brain at the same time. So that's okay. So it's what, what we're trying to do it in, in these cases is really just balance yes. the left. So if, so yeah. if one side is now, what would it be? So, so what you're saying is you need to get the air up, let's say the, the left side, and that's where you want to, you know, yeah. use the oils. Is there something going on on the right side? Like, is there a, a time where it's better to, you know, kind of plug up the left side and, and do the right nostril breathing. Yeah, I get it. Doing... I actually get into that in, in my book. I give a lot more detail. And um, we, we ha- if people want more information on that, they can go to um, boostthebrainbook.com backslash gift, and we'll send them a free chapter that kind of gets into that. But yeah, and, and to go back to your original question, um, smelling oils is the fastest way to get them into the system because it goes directly into the brain. You know, the brain is protected by the blood brain barrier that only lets super small fat soluble molecules like essential oils in and your nose, your nose cells are actually brain cells and that's where the blood brain barrier is the thinnest. So that is the fastest route into the body, you know, and you can smell something as I was mentioning um, and it it doesn't matter whatever oil you have in your house is what you smell. Uh, It can calm you down immediately. You know, the second strongest way I think is actually um, transdermal through the skin. Mm-hmm. The, the way I kind of uh, got into oils, it was after, you know, wounded healers that we are, my first kind of um, rock bottom. My uh, now ex husband uh, attempted suicide and I found him and he was in the hospital. And I was like, oh my God, what am I, how am I going to do this? Because the kids were five and seven. I had a job. I'm like, how do I have him home and keep him alive, you know, on, on suicide watch? And anyway, uh, we wound up moving him into a residential treatment facility. There weren't any in our state. So his sister came and helped me move him to Texas. And the minute that I knew that he was safe and it wasn't my job to be hypervigilant and keep him alive, I hit rock bottom. I, um, my adrenals had been pumping out cortisol for at least five years. And so I just, I had run out of gas. Um, and I was trying, I knew enough to be taking like adaptogenic herbs and all these things that should help and nothing was working. And a friend who was like, you realize that cortisol causes inflammation and your gut is probably so inflamed that nothing you're trying to ingest is actually getting assimilated and absorbed. Why don't you try essential oils? They're topically applied and they get into your system really quickly. And the minute she said that, and I started using oils, I was like, oh my God, this works right away. So, I mean, you, you can ingest them, people do. Um, mm-hmm. I would just say use caution and maybe work with a practitioner. I think it's far more effective to inhale directly or topically apply. Diffusing is fine. It's just that mm-hmm. people tend to overdo it, you know, maybe do it for 20 minutes twice a day. Beyond that mm-hmm. is, is a little bit more than you need. Now, what about the, what about the quality? Because, you know, I, I heard too, if they're not like, pure or quality oils you know now here you are smelling through your 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 strongest channel here something that actually isn't good for you yeah there's a lot of fear marketing out there i mean obviously like you know when you go to the mall and you smell those candles that's artificial fragrance like Mm -hmm. avoid those you know make sure it actually comes from a plant and then if you can i think organic is important because what people don't realize is oils are really the concentrated essence of plants so mm-hmm. there's certain oils that are kind of, you know, grown in the wild, like um, frankincense, myrrh, vetiver, all of these root plants, which you don't, you know, they, if they're wild crafted, you're always kind of fine. You know, certain plants like, um, you know, peppermint's kind of a weed. It, it grows pretty wild. You don't necessarily need pesticides to grow it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I think... I, I want to not contribute to fear marketing because I think it's kind of hard to do it wrong. As long as you're getting real oil, um, you know, and I think most people can tell when something smells 
artificial, you know, like Cinnabon, yeah. it smells through the whole mall that, that something's not right, right there. Um, Absolutely. I gotcha. Yeah. So, so tell me now when, when you started using oils, when you uh, crashed and I, and I know that feeling I've been there too, where you, you feel like when something is over you, your body, it's like your body almost says, listen, I was just holding up as best I could. And now I am done. And it doesn't matter what you say, uh, you know, and I remember actually taking my, I have a staircase in my home and, and pulling myself up the stairs. And I felt like I was walking through mud all day. I could sleep at night and wake up and it felt like I needed a, you know, it's like I didn't sleep at all. But when you started using the oils after, during that period, what did you notice? What, what symptoms cleared up and how did you feel? Yeah, it, it really was, you know, when your adrenals are so fatigued, like adrenal exhaustion. And so what I was doing was supporting my adrenals and the symptoms were, it, it was just no energy, no mental, no physical, no emotional energy. I had zero motivation. You know, my kids were five and seven and I loved them so much that I would force myself to get up I would make them breakfast. I would pack their lunches. I would help them with homework. I would drive them to school. And then I, all I could do was either crawl back under the covers or like binge watch something stupid. Like I just had no motivation at all. And that was the biggest, it was no physical energy and also kind of no joy, you know, like normally mm. yoga and running, there were a lot of things that, that made me happy. All of the things that normally made me happy, I just couldn't get excited about. It was a really different place to live in. And what about physical symptoms? Do you remember any physical symptoms that you yeah, had Yeah, well, low, low back pain, because that's okay. kind of where um, the adrenals are. Uh, you know, I was craving a lot of salt. Like it was weird. I wasn't really hungry, but when I did eat, you know, some people crave sweets. I just really wanted salt because that's the adrenals need salt. Um, you know, one of the other symptoms when your um, ad adrenals are kind of out of control, your, your pupils get big, surprise, surprise. And so you need sunglasses even when it's not that bright out. You know, like oh, you're, wow. you're wearing sunglasses and it's kind of cloudy and overcast and everyone's like, you know, it's not yeah. summer. <laughs> right, right. Well, you, you're not a rock star. Okay. Yeah, and just kind of mental fog. Like um, even, that's why I think I was watching television. Like normally I like to read, but there was just something about like even the smallest task, e very easily overwhelmed. You know, like I couldn't, um, it's funny because all these people were calling because they were worried about me and I just couldn't answer the phone. I couldn't do it. Everything felt like too much. And nor and even things that normally, you know, like um, where I would have panic attacks actually was the supermarket checkout line, which was so annoying. You know, you like go and you <laughs> get everything you need and then the line's too long or you suddenly feel claustrophobic and I, I would have to abandon my cart sometimes. So that little hack about smelling things through the left nostril, that has been a lifesaver. Wow. Okay. So then you started, you know, just doing the nostril breathing and the, and the oils. And did you notice one symptom over another? Like what happened first? The first was kind of finding joy again. Like what, what I did, the way it started was someone gave me oils. They didn't really tell me how to use them. And I, um, muscle tested, you know, is anything going to help my adrenals? I got five oils, which was confusing because normally I get like one or two. And then it occurred to me that I could combine them. So I, you know, took each bottle and kind of muscle tested, okay, six drops of this, five drops of this. And I put them together and put them on my low back. And my first thought was I can go running. And my whole life I've been, um, I was on the middle school track team. So ever since I was, you know, an, an early teenager, running was kind of my joy. And I just couldn't do it. And I was like, oh my God, I can go running. So I went running and I came back and, you know, showering, even when you're kind of in that place feels like a lot of work. So I took a shower, I did the laundry and, you know, it's not just doing the laundry, it's folding it and putting it away. Mm -hmm. I went to the supermarket, I made their favorite meal. I cleaned the house. Like I got more done in that one day than I had honestly in the previous three weeks. Wow. I just, it was, it was kind of like lifting the fog. Like I just, I couldn't even take that first step. It was literally like, you know, you're trying to hike and you can't even see one foot in front of you. And so it just gave me a little bit of breathing room. Like I could see the next three steps and, and they were possible. 
That's amazing. And and I just for those who aren't familiar with muscle testing, please explain. Yeah. So basically your body has kind of what's known as an information field. It's a little bit of an energy torus that surrounds it. That's that's full of information. You can ask your body questions. Like you, most of us know, like, you know, maybe when you're having your period, you crave chocolate. That's your intuition telling you you need magnesium or you really need a hamburger because you're low in iron. You, you know, we all know our, our body kind of, we, we drink water when we're thirsty, we sleep when we're tired. We know that our body is communicating with us, but you know, sometimes we just forget to listen to it. So there is a way of asking your body often yes, no questions so that you can get more clarity about what um, is kind of the, the primary issue. You know, like so many of us were like gaining weight. We can't remember where we left our glasses or our keys. We um, are more tired than we're used to. And there could be a lot of things going on. But the more you can figure out this is the presenting priority. Oh, your nervous system is kind of stuck in the wrong gear. Let's balance your nervous system. And then everything else kind of follows. Oh, your sleep is compromised. If we can just get you sleeping, we can normalize your blood sugar and all of these other things. So for efficiency purposes, it's really helpful to figure out what is the priority? What is that one little adjustment that's going to set you everything else in balance? And so muscle testing, what you know, it's kind of like you, you can use a pendulum. Um, some people press down on arms. Some people just, I, I sometimes ask, and if I lean forward, that's a yes. If I fall back, it's a no. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of ways that you can um, look at it. There's, there's actually a good free pendulum download. It's called Letters from Robin. R-O-B-I-N, and it just kind of shows you how to get started with the pendulum. You know, you can usually buy them for like $10. Like that's a really easy way to just get started and to start getting more and more comfortable with um, asking questions. I, I love that. And personally, I use a pendulum all the time. And I just, uh, because for me, it's something tangible. I can ask a question. There it is. And, and there are so many ways to, to really learn how to use that. But the muscle testing I find so interesting because here our body is telling us clearly if something if it is a yes or a no, if it's in our best interest, if, if it's not. Oh, I, because... do it. I do it in the supermarket all the time. I'll like be, is this something like dairy? I, I uh -huh. love dairy, but sometimes my body doesn't love dairy. So I'll hold something and can I have this? And it's either yes, I lean forward or, or I do it with coffee sometimes. You know, because we go in and out, right? There are certain times that we can have things and other times that it's just not the best for us. And isn't it when, uh, I think when someone is muscle testing us, won't there, I heard that there's about a 50% decrease in our strength if so, if something is not true or you yeah. know, is a no. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of, it varies. It depends on how, um, you know, like heavy metals, if someone's very high in heavy metals and you put another heavy metal in the field, it just blows their gasket, you know? So it, it, you know, you can kind of sense the resistance. Yeah, for some people, you just literally go completely weak. It, it, it varies. It's not, um, it, 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 there are a lot of variables that come into play that, that impact that. But yes, it, right. it can be. Yeah, and, but then I guess we would need somebody else for that. And then I heard there's the kind where you just, uh, you know, you, you take your, your yeah. index finger and your thumb. Yeah. What, what about that way? Tell us about that. That, I mean, you can, yeah, there are a lot of ways. It's kind of like, um, all roads lead to Rome. Yeah. You can do this, like show me yes, show me no, you know, you just have to kind of act like with the pendulum for me, um, yes is forward and back and no is side to side. It's just kind of training. It, it, you're, you're tapping into the same thing. It's just different ways of asking the question. So whatever your comfort level is that, and, you know, and there are different people that teach it like um, Todd Watts who founded Cellcore, he uses like a little thing where he rubs, but it's basically just like, you know, you can write something by hand, you can write it in cursive, you can type it up. There are lots of ways. It, it's just whatever kind of um, resonates with you. For me, pendulum is the lowest hanging fruit. It's it's easiest, and by kind of using something external, it's validating. That's you know, it's I love that you said that. I that's what I use too, and and it's one of those things. If you're not familiar with it, I know the greatest gift I gave myself was just because I don't understand something doesn't mean it's not true, and it always left me 
with curiosity. Yes. And I think it's just a, a great way to go through life where you may be, someone may be hearing this right now saying, that sounds full blown crazy. But you know something? Think about it. If you're on the fence about something, if you're not sure and you can have a little assistance, uh, wouldn't that be comforting? So it's just worth exploring. That's all I'm suggesting. Yeah. So Jody, at, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, that's how I, I, I pretend I'm window shopping through life. I look at something through the window and say like, hmm, that's, in, you know, and I don't, I try not to be attached. Like, like I'm going to leave that in the maybe pile. Like, okay. I love that. As we wrap up, what do you want to make sure everyone knows? I guess I want to make sure everyone knows that they, 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 they can feel better. There, there are a lot of ways that they can shift into feeling better. It's a little bit like if you're a, a biker. I, I live in Seattle. I bike. We have big hills. You know, if you ever start to bike up the big hill and you're in the highest gear, it's going to be a lot harder. You can shift gears. You can make that so much easier for yourself. And by doing deep breathing, by trying to go to gratitude, which sends different, you know, um, chemical signals in your body, by using essential oils, there are a lot of ways that you can shift gears. And it's a really good first step. You know, even when you downshift on your bike, you still have to pedal. It's just easier. This just sets you up for easier success. You know, what I love about everything you said is you're just giving yourself the support you need while you're struggling. It's almost like training wheels. You know, you need them until you don't. Exactly. So, right. So why water not just wings. Yourself- yeah. Right, right. So it's like, why not just give yourself the support you need when you need it? So my brilliant friend, Jody Cohen, thank you so much just for your wisdom and your insight. Where can everybody go to learn all about you and the wonderful work you do? You know, the best place is go to boostthebrainbook.com backslash gift and just grab this gift. It gives you 25 different ways that you can activate your parasympathetic nervous system. Many of them are free. You know, it can be like walking outside in the sunshine. It's that easy. And we can do that. Yeah. So thank you so much for all you shared with us. And I know everybody is like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Just choose one thing. Jody shared so many. Yeah, Yeah. That's all you need to do. Like that's just getting you. It's a new habit. It's getting you in the right direction. Absolutely. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I took tons of notes during my conversation with Jody. I never thought to look at someone's pupils to see if they have the capacity and wherewithal to hear me. Stay in touch with Jody by going to boostthebrainbook.com forward slash gift, and we'll have all of her information in the show notes at the pbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway. When you feel like stress has hijacked your brain, here are some powerful things to try. One, breathing, four counts in and eight counts out. Two, use quality essential oils. Jody mentioned rubbing the back of your ear on the mastoid bone. And do you know we have two essential oil trios specifically for the symptoms we experience after a betrayal? Emotional boost and emotional support. And you can find them at the pbtinstitute.com forward slash essential dash oils. Three, Sing, hum, smile. These actions boost brain chemicals that help calm us down. Four, smell the oils. The olfactory receptors and our sense of smell are the most powerful out of the five senses, so use it to help make you feel more calm. Five, left nostril breathing, which helps balance all that's been going on on the right side forehead, which is what's out of balance with a panic attack. Who knew? Six, oils being absorbed through the skin can be helpful too. Seven, muscle test to see if something is a yes or a no. Many different ways to do that. Didn't I tell you Jody was smart? Like the show, please subscribe, rate, and review. And of course, if you know of someone struggling to heal from a betrayal, be sure to tell them about the show. And if you haven't already, be sure to take the post-betrayal syndrome quiz, which you can find at the pbtinstitute.com forward slash quiz. And if the essential oil trios are a fit, you can find them at the pbtinstitute.com forward slash essential dash oils. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time. And here's to your breakthrough.